Okay, so we're on Ayin Aleph Ahmed Aleph uh, near the bottom. We are on 71A4, the last par the last uh, paragraph in the right-hand column. So I just want to mention one point. When we talked about if you made a vow that the Shalotita Machmik Paris, if she's not going to eat any uh, species of fruit anymore uh, or whatever, um, Tosvos has this different shot. We didn't have time to talk about it. Tosvos' shot is that he says that if she eats a certain fruit, then she won't be allowed to have marital relations with him. So he didn't, the vow isn't that she's never allowed to make the fruit, but if she would eat the fruit, that would trigger the vow. And with that vow taking effect, then they wouldn't be allowed to stay married anymore. So it's, it's a, it's a more indirect case, but certain issues with Rashi's opinion, uh, with Rashi's opinion, get answered, go away with Tosus's trap. So Tosus's trap himself, itself seems a little strange, but there are similar cases like that. So, for example, um, in the regard to a get, we know that you can make, I, I mentioned last week, I think, that I, I couldn't remember if something was from this halacha or from the Tanai, and I realized it was from Tanai. That when you make a uh, a business transaction or even a kedushin or a get a get, you're allowed to make a tanai a condition that the the terms of the contract will take place if a certain condition is met. We actually had it way back at the beginning on Daf Beis or Daf Gimel, where uh, if he doesn't, uh, they're they're married or they're, they're they're divorced if he doesn't come back within thirty days, and they see that he's on the other side of the river, but. There, but the the bridge got swept away, so he couldn't make it. So we spoke. We actually spoke a little uh, a drop. And we had that case all the way at the beginning. That phase, that gimel of ksuvos. But there's a halacha. In so. So the Rambam is quoting a Gemara, I think a Daf Pe Gimel in Gitten. If this is your get on condition that you don't get married to to Mr. X, that's not a a get. What's that similar to? It's similar to if you would tell her this is your get on condition that you never drink wine again or that you'll never return to your father's house again, or uh, or all the all the days that I'm alive. When it's so open-ended like that, it's just tell her you're never allowed to drink wine. That's, uh, that's not something that's really sustainable. So therefore, it can never take effect. Well, so the, it, it's a get, it's different than what we're talking about, but a get is something that has to cut them off completely. If there's certain things that would keep them but some even very small strings, but strings attached, it wouldn't be okay. So the fact that he's not letting her marry any person, any person in the world, he said, you can marry anyone but Mr. X. That's not a full uh, cut between them, split between them. Or to say that you can never return to your father's house, or you can never drink wine. That's, that's not possible. So that's not, the get won't take effect. But if he said on condition that you won't, marry so-and-so for 50 years, then it is a get. And if she wants to stay married, uh, to, to, to get to stay effective, she can't marry that guy. So what Rashi, what Tosos is saying, we do see a similar analog in other halachas. So for him to say, uh, or whether she said or he said, probably she. Uh, he said that that uh, if that uh, if you eat a, a certain you know a kiwi, then you won't be able to have you your the the pleasure the hana of the marital relations is forbidden with you. So that's not some so because she would never be allowed to have that food, or else they'd be in a situation where they would be forced to get divorced because he's not this. Uh, marital relations is part of being married, and if they would, it would be prohibited from them by the vow. 
uh, uh, they would have to get divorced. So that's why for, that's a, the shot according to Toswell's of this scenario. Okay, so where we left off, uh, 71A4. So the Mishnah said that if she made a, a vow that she was not going to use, or if 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 he made the vow or she made the vow and he didn't cancel it, that she wasn't going to use a certain type of makeup or perfume. So the Tanakama says they have to get divorced and he has to pay her ksuva. Rabbi Yossi says if they're uh, not wealthy, there's no set limit. But if they're wealthy, uh, it's 30 days. So if the vow would be for less than 30 days, they'd be allowed to stay married. So for a, for a non-wealthy person, they don't have to get divorced. For a wealthy woman, if the if the vow was for 30 days or more, then they'd have to get divorced. So Rabbi so Yossi holds that when they're, they're he's, the word is poor, but it means not, not wealthy, there's no limit. Alma Baal Matzi Mefer. So it sounds like the husband is able to cancel such a vow. And in this case, or and so in some cases, if he wouldn't, or for the rich woman and, and it was for more than 30 days, if he doesn't annul it, it's his fault, and therefore they have to get divorced and he has to pay the ksufa because it's his fault for not annulling it. Uh Ramin who but Alaska contradiction. Eludvarm Shabal Mefer. These are the type of of uh, uh, vows that a husband is able to cancel. If they involve physical afflictions, like uh, I'm going to bathe or I'm not going to bathe. If I put on makeup or I don't put on makeup or put perfume or don't put perfume. I'm Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Yossi's opinion is these are not vow, vows of self affliction. So putting so from our mission, it sounds like Rabbi Yossi's opinion is that her not putting perfume is self affliction. Therefore, the husband is able to cancel it. From this other bride that he says, if she asks it, if she says, I'm going to either put on the makeup or the perfume or not put it on, is not a self affliction. So that this so that this mission of Rabbi Yossi's opinion contradicts what he says there. But let's just finish what that other mission says. But Elohim Eno Nefesh. According to Rabbi Yossi, vows that are self-affliction are I won't eat meat or I won't drink wine or I won't wear colored clothes. So I guess in those days, Rashi says that it was a disgrace and it was uh, humiliating and he will be disgusted towards her. Well, actually... Big Day Tivonim is actually, if I'm not mistaken, what is what they call um, what the underwear were called. It doesn't seem like it's. Uh, it doesn't seem that that's the outer clothes. Well, they probably didn't wear bright colored clothes on the outside. But if if he wanted to her to wear nice underwear and she or, or she refused or or she made a vow to 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 not wear the nice underwear, uh, and he doesn't cancel it, that would be something that's. That's uh, uh, an enoid to him. But we see that putting on the perfume, according to that Mishnah, is not, enoid is not a self-affliction, according to Abiyosi. So the Gemara says, Here we're not literally taught, our Mishnah isn't literally talking about flows. It's talking about um, things that are literally between him and her. So Rashi says it's a, a powder or something that would take away her pubic hair. Now it happens to be, I don't know how literal it is, but there's a word in the, I think the first paragraph of Gittin that says that part of the problem of Pelagish Begiva. So a few weeks ago, we read that after Shimshon, after the incident of Shimshon in Sefer Shoftim, there's the incident of Pelagish Begiva. There was a man with his concubine, they went to Binyamin and whatever it was, uh, they wouldn't let them stay anywhere, and then they raped the wife to death, or to the to the cusp of death, and then he finally got home and she died, and he cut her pieces, uh, her her body into pieces, sent the different pieces to the different shvatim, and says Binyamin, Yeshevet Binyamin uh, caused this, and then all the other shvatim went to fight against Binyamin for not doing 
for, for, and then for, for raping her and this and that. And the war didn't go so well for the rest of the Shvatim. And then they had the Davin, which is a, a whole crazy thing. And then they wouldn't let anyone marry Shevet Binyamin. Um, so there's a Gemara Gittin that says that something happened that that uh, he that the husband had become a uh, basically because of the pubic hair that she had, he ended up uh, uh, becoming sterile. I guess the hair went up the wrong place, and and what, so so there's a Gemara in the second parak of Sanhedrin where it talks about uh, the Yafas Toar. Whatever. So it seems that that uh, for several reasons, some of which aren't so clear, uh, uh, that the the Jewish women used to get rid of their pubic hair and their underarm hair. Um, so if she would refuse to do that, that would be the case of that. According to Abiyosi, that would be a um, an enoy, an, uh, a vow of ne of of enoy of affliction that the husband should have annulled if she made it, and because he didn't, they have to get divorced, or they they might have to get. Well, according to if they're not rich, he, they wouldn't have to get divorced. But it's a vow that he that the husband is able to. Um, is able to cancel. So that is good according to the opinion that the husband could annul this type of vow. But there is an opinion uh, that the husband is not able to annul such a vow. My equal memer, how would you explain it? The idmer, because we learned in a teaching of Amoraim, Varm Shabbin things between him and her, which in this case seems to be removing her, her pubic hair. Rabbi Huna Omer Abba Mefer. Rav Huna says the husband is allowed to annul it. Rav Adabar Abba Amar Ainabba Mefer. Rav Adabar Abba says the husband is not allowed to cancel it. We never saw that a, fo that a fox died from being buried alive in its own foxhole. So according to Rav Abba, Abba Bar Abba, even this, the question is is back to the beginning. Does Rabbi Yossi allow annulment of of certain of the, of, of vows similar to this category or not? So so we have to answer to Shamita. He made uh, marital relations dependent on for using uh, these makeups or perfumes. The Amar Yeyasar and Tashmishka Alai Im Eskashi. So she said, uh, I should, the, the benefit, the pleasure uh, or the benefit or the pleasure of the marital relations should be forbidden on me if I will put on this perfume or put on this makeup. So since what she's saying could affect their their ability to have marital relations, the husband is allowed to cancel it. Kira Amar of Kahana, as Rav Kahana says, which which goes according to the opinion of Kahana, the Amar of Kahana, because Rav Kahana says, Hanas Tashmishi Alecha, if the wife made a vow that she was uh, prohibiting the permission, the the pleasure of of marital relations uh, with her husband, Kofa Umishamsha. So the first opinion is, is that he forces her and he's allowed to have relations with her. Now, this doesn't say, this doesn't mean he physically forces her. It says that the vow takes no effect. It doesn't even need to be annulled. It's automatically null and void. That That's all it means. Anas tashmi shavalai. But if she says the pleasure of your marital relations is prohibited to me. So meaning the first case is anas tashmi shi alai. She says, I'm I'm prohibiting uh, the pleasure of of the cohabitation with me. It's being prohibited to you. So COVID it has absolutely no effect that he's still allowed to have marital relations with her because her vow is completely doesn't take effect. But if she says the pleasure of 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 uh, of 
of marital relations with you should be prohibited to me, yefer. He has to annul that vow. Because you're not allowed to feed to a person something which is prohibited to him. So meaning, if his wife can't have relations to him, then he can't be with his wife. And that's not an a, a okay situation. So he has to annul the vow. So, so Rav Kahana held that this vow has a potential to take effect if she tried to, to say that the pleasure of, of, cohab of the marital relations with him was forbidden on her. So he has to annul the vow. Because if he doesn't, then it will take effect and then they won't really be able to stay married. So no, even if she makes the vow, let her not um let her not uh so let her not take on the, the put on the makeup. Because again, we said we said where she says, if I will put on this makeup or put on this perfume. The uh the, pro, the so this was if you're looking in the art scroll side it's 71 b1 the fourth line up from the bottom on the left column that's the case the amri yes or no she says that the pleasure of of uh, your uh, mirrored relations would would be prohibited on me if I get if I put on makeup and the the perfume so the gemara now is asking in the middle of the next column below the scotch or below the answer so let her not put on this perfume and she won't become forbidden to her husband. So why does the husband, why is it in the category of things that the husband is able and uh, recommended to cancel the vow? So the Gemara says, in because if she doesn't use the perfume, they will call her uh, uh, disgusting or repulsive. So because she doesn't want to be known as, uh, as a minovelas, She's at some point she is going to put on perfume or makeup or whatever it is. So then why don't we just say if she puts on the perfume, she will come uh, forbidden to her husband. We learned back in the, the fifth parak, according to Beishamai, they can stay married for two weeks and then they have to get divorced. Or according to Beis Hillel, they could stay married for uh, one week and then they have to get divorced. So why does our mission say they have to get divorced immediately? So when we said, according to Beis Shammai, there's two weeks or Beis Hillel, one week, that's when the the uh, the Tash Mishamita, the marital relations is prohibited based on something that he vowed. The Savra Mirta Farasati Lave she thinks that he's angry. He made the 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 vow out of being angry, out of being angry. But then he's going to calm down. Meaning, so if he was in an agitated, angry state, he's able to say something that he would regret. But here, where she made the vow, and he by and he was quiet. Meaning, this is what. Uh, uh, in in uh, politics, is called the the pot the pocket veto. That if the president doesn't sign the bill within what ten, seven days or ten days, I don't remember what it is. The 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 if Congress passes the law and the president doesn't sign it, it's a veto without him actively vetoing it. It's by being passive and not taking the action that he needs to take. He's vetoing it. So from the fact that she made the vow and he was silent and didn't cancel the vow. Now she's going to think that he hates him, uh, that he hates her, and they have to get divorced immediately. Rabbi Yossi says, for the non-wealthy women, there is no set time. Uh, oh, well, if the only time he has to divorce her, if she made the vow not to what we what we had translated in the Mishnah as putting on the perfume, but we learned it was removing the hair. So if it was an indefinite term, they have to get divorced. But if it's not an indefinite term, even if it's for 10 years, they don't have to get divorced. That's Rabbi Yosef's opinion. The Kama Kitzvah, well, 
I just said 10 years, but I, the, the Gemara is going to say the 20 opinions, but the Kama Kitzba, what is the set time? That if it's longer than that, they have to get divorced, but if it's shorter than that, they don't get divorced. Am Rabbi Yudah Meshmuel, Shnei Masar Chodesh. Rabbi Yudah said the name of Shmuel, it's 12 months. Rabbi Barbachana, Am Rabbi Yochanan, Eser Shonim. 10 years. Rabbi Chista of Amar Avimi Ragel. Rabbi Chista's name of Avimi, it is one Ragel away. So from Sukkot to Pesach, or, Pe or Pesach to Shavuos is a little bit uh, questionable because then there's not really much difference between her and a... Uh, And the rich person who's 30 days, uh, because the Jewish women uh, get uh, dressed up on the ragel, on the festival. So honestly, I'm, I, I, I don't fully understand what's going on in this Gemara here because it seems that this this principle, Shekem Benos Yisrael, Miskashtos Beregel, is something very simple. The husband gets him a new dress, we learn, uh, 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 we or new shoes or jewelry for Yantif. So it seems to literally be, be talking about. Um, about the clothes that she wears. So it makes sense. She's If she's getting dressed in fancy clothes, she's going to put on perfume, she's going to put on makeup. But we just said that the whole thing, according to Rabbi Yossi, had to do with removing her, her hair. So I guess you have to say that if she was going to dress up in fancy clothes, she was also going to uh, groom herself, I guess, uh, uh, Because we just explained that the Gemara that 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 uh, because the Mishnah said because the Mishnah said. Again, Rashi said on the Mishnah that this case is if she made she made the vow that she wasn't going to use perfume, and he did not annul it. But the whole Gemara before with the contradiction between Rabbi Yossi, it's not talking about regular perfume because that's not something that's annullable. So I I'm I'm not sure what the pshat is in the. I know that I don't know the chat, and I'm sorry that I can't explain the chat to you. Okay, seventy-one B three, two dots above, two lines above the Mishnah. If they're rich, and she, the, she would make a vow against the perfume for thirty days. Mishnah Lamidiyom, I'm Rabbi Shekin Isha Chashuva Nenis Merech Kishutel Lamidiyom. Rabbi says because the important wealthy women, they're so I assume it was something like Esther. They would sit in the perfumed oil for like a day or something for it to, to stay on them. So it would stay for 30 days. So if she made the vow, 
that uh that she's not going to use this perfume it, it doesn't take effect till after 30 days because it's a perfume that i guess is not like our perfume you just spray on but it they soaked in it so it became i guess kind of steeped in their skin a little bit it lasted for 30 days so therefore the vow will stay for 30 days because um for her she'd have to reapply it or whatever the word would be every 30 days so if the vow would have been not to use her perfume for less than 30 days and she was wealthy so she used to do it every 30 days uh and the husband didn't annul it they don't have to get divorced because um she could survive for the term of the vow without having the the perfuming uh uh situation performed mishnah if a person, if he made a vow against his wife that she's not allowed to go to her father's house. Or if she, or if she made the vow, I'm not, uh, and, and he didn't cancel it. So if the husband lives, if the father lives in the same city that they live in, if the vow was for one month or less, uh, they could stay married. But if the vow was for two months or longer, they have to get divorced, then the husband has to pay the ksuba. What? So the halacha actually is, is that once she gets married, she doesn't have to do kibbutz of aim to her, to her father anymore, to her parents anymore. I haven't seen this halacha in many years, but uh, that is the halacha. I mean, I haven't seen it inside in Shulchan Aruch, but that's the halacha. If the father lives in a different city, they can stay married till the next uh, of the three regalim. But if it was for three regalim or more, then they have to get divorced and he pays her the ksuba. If he made a vow that she's not allowed to go to a funeral or burial or to a wedding, the... the um, Yotibi Tinksuba, he ha they he has to give her a get and they uh and he has to pay her ksuva. because he's lacking things in front of her. The Gemara is going to explain what he's lacking. But if he claimed because he didn't want her to go to these places because of something else, the Gemara will explain what the something else is. Rashai, he's allowed and justified to make such a uh, vow and they don't have to get divorced. Amar la amanasha tomri lipuni martali. If he said that he made a vow uh, that there's something on condition that she has to tell someone else what she told him, or you have to tell that person what I told you, or that you have to fill up and throw it in the garbage, they have to get divorced and he pays her the ksuva. We're going to talk what she's filling up and putting in the garbage. Okay, so the Gemara starts talking about if their fa if the father li if if the wife's father lives in a different city. So if uh if the term of the of the vow is for one regal, they stay married. But if it's for three regalim, they have to get divorced. So what's the difference between what's in between one and three? Two. So the question is, according to the so the Gemara is going to ask Hagufa Kash, It's inherently uh, uh difficult. Amart regal First, you said that if the vow was for one regal, they could stay married. Hashnam suba. That implies that if the vow was that she can't visit her father for two regalim, they have to get divorced. Ama sefa. But the second line in the in, uh, in that in that part of the Mishnah says shlosha suba. If the vow was for three regalim, they have to get divorced. Hashnam yotivitim. That implies that if the term of the prohibition of the vow or whatever was for only two. Uh, regalim. They don't. They stay married, and they don't have to get divorced. So what's halacha for two months? 
we can't figure it out from the Mishnah. That's the first clause contradicts the second clause. Amr Abaye Abaye says, Seifa son la Kohanes. The second part comes to a Kohanes, Rabbi Yehudahi, and it's according to Rabbi Yehuda that we learned about two Mishnayas ago that uh, Rabbi Yehuda was concerned that because a Kohen can't, uh, if a Kohen divorces his wife, he can never remarry her. So for a Kohen, we give them three, we give them three regal. But for Yisrael, it's one rega. So he explains it's true that it's that it's inherently contradiction. But the first case is talking about a regular Yisrael. So for regular Yisrael, it's for two regalim, they'd have to get divorced. But when it's said if it's three regalim, they can. Uh, if it's for three regalim, they get divorced. That's for if the wife is a is a is a Kohen. So we give him two regalim. So if it's two, we give him extra time because if they get if the Kohen would divorce his wife, he's never allowed to remarry her. And you have to say, according to Abai's answer, our Mishnah, there or this part of the Mishnah, at least, the author of the Mishnah is Rabbi Yehuda, who distinguishes that we give a Kohen more time uh, before he's forced to divorce his wife. In some cases. Rabbi Bar-Ula uh, Bar Rabbi Bar gave a different answer. Lokasha, it's not a, 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 a problem. Kan Beredufa, Kan When it's uh, one month is a, a woman who loves running back to her father's house. But when it was three regalim, that's if she's not someone who was always running to go back to her father's house. So if she was constantly running back and wants to run back, so to not allow her for even one regal, for, for, uh, for, one, the length, for one regal would be cause for divorce, but for three, it's not. Uh, no, but from what we see, it m might depend on how long they've been married, from what we're about to... Uh, if it's going to be their first regal after marriage. Because there's a Pasuk, this says it's in Shira Shiram. Yeah. So then I will be in his eyes like someone who has found peace. Uh, Rashi said, I mean, the Irish girl translates it to Kamote Shalom, even though Kamote Shalom literally means like I found peace, that that, that uh, it's found to be perfect. Am Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan explains this Pazik Kachalash and Imsa Shlema Beves Hamia. This is like a Kala who's been found to be complete and perfect in her father in law's house. Or Adufa Leila Kalahagi Chivcha Beves Havia. And therefore she wants to run home and tell her father how how well things are going in her marriage that. That her in laws like her. Uh, this pasuk is in Hoshea on that day. I think we read in Haftorah uh, at some point during the year. I said, Hashem, uh, you will call me um, my husband and you will no longer call me my master. I'm Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan said a similar drasha. She'll be like a, a kala in her father-in-law's house and not a, a bride in her father's house. Meaning that while she's... So the uh, way Rashi says, when she's a kala in her father's house, so meaning the, the Nesuin didn't take place yet, so they're not fully married. She's not super close to her husband yet. But after the chuppah, and then she's going to be spending more time near her father-in-law's house. Then it's after the the uh, the uh, after the chuppah and stuff. So then, um, her heart is much more closer to her, her husband, and she will be much more. I don't the word intimate is is not has some meanings and one of them is not the meaning the meaning that I'm trying to use here, but she'll feel much more comfortable and stuff with her husband. So that's when we'll call her my husband and not Bailey, my master. That before the wedding, uh she's not gonna feel as close to him yet. Okay, Hamadaris Ishta. So if he made a vow that she can't go to a 
wedding or to a funeral. Uh, he has to get the uh, he's he has to get divorced because he's lacking things before her. Just a second, I'm sorry. Bishlam of the base of we can understand why he doesn't want her to go to a wedding. Ika Noel Bifaneha, he's lacking her. Uh, he's lacking the door in front of her because she can't go for uh for for a social event. So Rashi says he's lacking the door of Simcha, and so she's gonna feel pain or tsaris from that. Elulabesa Ava, my Noah Bifana Ika. But if he doesn't let her go to a funeral, what's he lacking up? Why is that such a bad thing? So Tana, we learned in the bride, so Lamachar he may say, if Chas v'shalom, if the husband would have not let, go, let her go to a funeral, and then the next day she would die, and then there'd be a funeral for her, the ain't Kalberia Softa, no one will come to eulogize her. The Ikeda Amri, and some say, ain't Kalberia Sofna, no one will come to bury her. So Ra Rashi says, just like she didn't do chesed to bury someone else, they're not going to do a chesed for her. Now, for some reason, when I learned this Gemara, the thing that came to mind is my Bobby. My Bobby, for decades and decades and decades, uh, volunteered with the Chavar Kedisha. She uh, did Taharos. And then at one point, she slipped on an icy Shabbos and broke her uh, her wrist or her, or her arm when I was a little kid. So after that, she didn't have the strength to do the Taharos. So then she called. When someone died, she would call people to arrange the tahara at the funeral house. Nowadays, I don't think they really do that anymore. They have some people on call, but uh, well, actually, that's not true because there's the there's the Chaver Kedisha in town, the JSS, and there's the CRC, and also there's uh, there's much fewer funeral homes. So if it's a CRC tahara, the CRC will send a certain people usually to do it. And the Chavar Kedisha, I'm not sure how they do it, but also there's fewer places to go, so there's less, there's less uh, logistics. And plus, in those days, people didn't have cell phones. She had to call people from people at home, and if they weren't home, she couldn't arrange a thing. But depending on what time the people were available, it was a whole mishigats when she used to call uh, to arrange these uh, taharos. Because first, you had to say where it was. Because there was Weinstein on Devon, Pizer on Peterson, there was potentially, uh, you know, uh, Weinstein over here in Wilmet, and you know, the people maybe didn't want to step to Wilmet, but someone would have to, people would have to go to, to give it to Hara. It was, uh, it was very difficult logistically, and there were there weren't uh, cell phones uh, then either. But so she said, the reason we, Bobby, why do you drive yourself so crazy? If 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 they're not going to bury me, that's what she always said, which is what this Gemara is saying. That's what she said. That's what this Gemara is saying. Tanya, we learned in the Brahisa. Hi, Rabbi Meir Omer. Rabbi Meir would say, My Dixie, why is the Pusik set? This isn't Kohelas. It's better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a wedding. Because that is the end of all man, and the living person will give to his heart or will take it to his heart. But what does the last phrase mean? The living person will give it to his heart. He has to put in his heart matters of death. The Safad Yispadune means if he gave a Hasbid, he will be, if he gives a eulogy, people will eulogize him. The Kavar Yikbarune, if he buried someone, people will bury him. Deidal Yidlune, if he cried for someone else, they will cry for him. The Levai Yilvune, if he accompanied people to their burial, People will accompany him. The Tan Yitanune. If he carried them, someone to be buried, they will carry him. So this is, I thought of my Bobby when uh, when I saw this come on. Now I guess the Bali Musar would give a different thing. Uh, the Bali Musar, in order to keep people from getting uh, uh, too arrogant and stuff, they say, "Remember the day that you're going to die." So according to the. Uh, that the Bali Musar would explain this Gemara without having to say the other thing. If you don't remember that you're going to die, you're going to do a Veras. Ramosha says, it said that he once he was at a Shavar Brachos and someone got up to speak was a real Musar Nick 
And he said, you know why we're so happy for the Chassan Kala? Because the Chassan Kala remembering the, the, the Yom HaMisa. Uh, Ramotion said the guy was a little out of touch with reality. Okay. V'im hayatoin mishum dabracher. So if he, so we just explained that if he uh, uh, prohibits her from going to a, f a funeral or weddings, they have to get divorced. Weddings because he's not letting her uh, have an enjoyable time and socializing. And for funeral, we just explained the reason is, is uh, if she doesn't go and participate in other people's burials, people, other people won't be involved in her burial. But the the Mishnah says if there was if he, there was a legitimate reason, it was he made this because of a certain other issue. Then he's 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 uh, he made it for a legitimate purpose, and uh, and they don't have to get divorced. So what is this Dabarachir? What is this other reason that if he makes the vow? The vow takes effect and it's not a problem. My davracher, I'm Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Huda, and Rabbi Shmuel, Mishum bnei Adam prutzim shemitzuyin sham. If there are prutzim, unscrupulously uh, 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 pr promiscuous people who would be uh, at the wedding or at the funeral. I'm Rabbi Ashi. Rabbi Ashi says, "Olam an eladis chazek." This is only true if we know that the, these type of people are at those type of weddings or those type of uh, funerals. Of Allah, it is chazik, but if we don't know that, that there is any uh, risk of promiscuity of these things, lo kokamine. Just because he's worried about it doesn't make him right, and he's not allowed to make the vow. So we saw way back, I think, in the third parak, maybe it was in the second parak, but I think it was in the third parak, that there was a situation where... Or maybe it was in the first pair, but um, they used to, they said that they used to uh, just like the there the the Gemara talked about what happens when a baby dies and you have to bury the baby, and so first they said I forgot if they said that first the mother would just carry the baby and go, and then they made the father go the husband go with whatever because there were people waiting over there and uh, uh, promiscuous people waiting to find. Uh, a woman by herself and some bad things happen. So even mm -hmm. though it doesn't seem so that at a funeral or at, or at the Shiva house that uh, these type of things would happen, but uh, the Gemara, we saw that Gemara way back uh, uh, that uh, that there are some uh, People who don't see things the way we do and look at certain times to as a time of opportunity for something mashuga. Um, so then the Mishnah says that if they made a vow and he say you have to tell Shmero what I told you or what you told me, they have to get divorced. So Vitema, let her say what's so bad that they have to get divorced over it. I'm Rabbi Yudam Shmuel Dvarim Shal there are things that are private and and potentially embarrassing. Rashi doesn't say, but it's clearly things related to their intimate uh, uh, relationship. Or or uh, the Sheet of Gebet says, uh, quotes of Rashi Madura Kama, that uh, you know, if they said something not nice about the person, and then he told her that she has to say it. Well, it's it's not good to tell. Uh, it's going to cause a fight. It's it's uh... okay. Or if he said that she had to fill up and pour it in the garbage, so they have to get divorced. So Vateyavid, let her pick it up and put it in the garbage. Amra. So what? Why is this? So bad that they have to get divorced. Am Rav Yehuda Amr Shmuel she she temale even no fat says. So Rav Yehuda Amr Shmuel says the reason is this is a euphemism to say that after they have marital relations she has to get up and jump around as a form of a birth control. 
that uh, that uh, the shiv chazera should come out of her so she wouldn't get pregnant. That's the that's the problem. So part of it, when Ravaron had gave, I guess probably in the late late sixties or early seventies, he gave a series of shiurim on the problems of contraception and birth control. So in this case, there wasn't an active birth control, but there is an iser of hashchasa zera of destroying the seed. So if she would take active measures to destroy the seed, that itself is an avera, even if it's. It could. He said there were four potential problems with with uh with the birth control so um so that might be the potential issue over here so if he was forcing her to do the avera of hashchas zera that i guess according to that explanation that would have been a grounds uh for them to get divorced so who should initiate the divorce in this case if if the husband was making the wife do that, I guess she would go to Basin and say, "This is what she's made. This is what he wants me to do." So Basin said, "You have to get divorced and you have to pay her ksuba because you were unjustified with this request, and she didn't do anything wrong." The Masnis and Tana and Abraisa, we had a different explanation for this. Shetmali Ashba, fill up ten pitchers of water and pour them in the garbage. So Bishlam Shmuel, we understand according to Shmuel, Bishum Hachiyot of Eating Suba. This is why he has to get her uh give get divorced, because it's really not talking about water, it's talking about destroying the seed. Alamas Nisa, according to this Brisa, that it's literally filling up ten uh ten pitchers of water and throwing them out. Why do they have to get divorced over that? My Naftalamina. Who cares that he's that she has to spill it out? The of it let let her spill out the water. Um, Rabbi Barbara, and again, remember, you know, even nowadays to fill up from the sink and pour out ten gallons is is silly. But in those days, where you had to gather it from the well and then pour it out in the garbage, is even more silly. Um, Rabbi Barbara, Chana, Rabbi Yochanan, Mipnei Kishota, because if she would get all this water and then spill it in the garbage, she looks like she is of unsound mind. Makes her look like she's crazy. So because he's going to make her do something that people in the neighborhood are going to think she's crazy, that's not right. So he has to divorce her. I'm Rav Kahana. Rav Kahana says, If uh, uh, a man imposes a vow on his wife that she's not allowed to borrow or lend uh, one of the, any of the following items. Nafukvara, uh, two types of sieves or sifters. Rechaim or a mill. So we probably mean a, a small hand mill to grind up, uh, to grind in, to grind flour vatan or, or the oven. This obviously, uh, you're not uh, you're not lending an oven. It's not a toaster oven that you could carry in those days. I guess you can't let someone use your oven, or you can't borrow someone else's to use someone else's oven. Yo but if if that's the case, rechaya might be a bigger mill, but it would seem to it wouldn't necessarily be a hand mill. Yo to be suba, they have to get divorced, and he has to pay her suba shemasia shemra bishchenusa because he's giving her a bad reputation or bad name among the neighbors. Because they say, oh, you know uh, Rachel over there, you know she she doesn't she she uh, she doesn't lend out stuff, or she's so meshuga we know that she needs something and she won't even borrow from us. So if he does something to make her look uh, not 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 the to the extreme of being a shota, but even this, according to Rav Kahana, they would get divorced. They uh, he 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 should divorce his wife and give her zuv over there. Tanei Amihach, we have a brisa like this. Hamadar sishul shol tisha v'lotashal nafav ukvara rechaim v'tanor. If someone made a vow for his wife that she can't lend or borrow uh, sifters, receives or the mill or the oven. Yo to be eating suba, they have to get divorced and he has to pay suba. Pinachia Masia Shem Rabbi Shrenusa, because he's giving her a bad name in the neighborhood. Bikahi, Bikhenhi, Shanadra, Shalotisha Vlotashal, Nafalukvara, Rechimitanor. If she made the vow that she was not gonna borrow or lend uh the sieves or sifters or the mill 
or the Arvin, or she's not going to weave nice clothing for his son, for his children. Tetev Shalobik Suva. She uh she gets divorced without a suba minesha masio masiaso shame rabbi shena because she's giving him a bad name. So for these last few cases, she's the one who initiated it. And uh and from that perspective, it's gonna make him look bad in the neighborhood. So in that case, she she will lose her ksuba. But it's a similar idea, but may, being considered, you know, very strange in the neighborhood like that is grounds for divorce. Okay, we'll read the Mishnah. I don't know how much we're going to do. Well, we'll do a little bit. But we get into, okay. The Elu, Yota, Shlub, Ksuba. The following have to get divorced and they do and they lose their Ksuba. These women do not get the Ksuba payment. Hoveris, Adas, Moshe, Yehud is. If they transgress the, the law of Moshe or the Judaism. So I was once with Kambi Avna paid um I mean I should say they they paid for us when we had Hanukkah weekend off, we had the weekend off, but they paid for us to have a two day discovery program at Asha Torah. And uh one of the things that one of the speakers mentioned is that there's no they said what's the what's the uh Hebrew word for religion? So I got up, I said das uh, or or I, I said dot with I use that. He said, Well, what's the word in, in, in the Torah for it? So I said das. And everyone burst out laughing. One guy told me he thought that I knew the guy and we set up it as a joke uh beforehand. I said, No, but in the Torah there is no law for it. There is no word for it. But this mission has the word das, and das is what's used for I mean, the word das is actually in, in Parsha Zosa Bracha, Ash Das Lama. But uh, it doesn't seem to mean uh, the meaning is not necessarily uh, the meaning here. But veris adas adas Moshe v'yehudis. So Rashi says that das yehudis. So das Moshe is clearly it's from the Torah and Torah uh, Torah tivalanu Moshe. But what's Das Yehudis? So Rashi says, Shenagu Benos Yisrael, Afagav Luxiba. These are the things that Benos Yisrael have been accustomed to, even though it's not written down. So if the Jewish women accepted a certain thing, and this one is not willing to do that, that's cause for divorce, even though it's not in the Torah. Well, there's a lot to see about this in the Gemara and uh, with other things. So what are Das Moshe? If she gives him food that did not have the misers taken off, or she has relations with him when she's a Nida, so she didn't go to the mikvah. If she didn't separate Chala from the dough that she made, or she makes vows and she doesn't fulfill them. And what are the the these practices or customs of the Jewish women that aren't written in the Torah? Because obviously those things about Nadarim and Chala and Miser and Nida, those are certainly Torah laws. So what are the non-Torah laws that the Jewish women do? Yotzev Rosh She goes out in public with her, with her hair uncovered. I guess it's kind of uh, relevant to this week's parsha. My father loves quoting the Tanchuma. About that, that uh, that uh, Own Ben Pelas's wife mm-hmm. saved Own by uh, when they came to get her to get Own, she was she she taken off her hair and she was combing her hair in front of the tent. So they they were so they were going to rebel against Moshe, but they see a woman with their hair uncovered, they ran the other way. So uh, so the their hair un- uncovered is something that seems to not be explicit in the Torah, but that's the minog of a bit of Benos uh, Yisrael. We're going to see more about it. There's also a Rashi in it in Parshas Naso from Sota a few weeks ago that we should, but we get to that to that discussion, we should remember to look at. Betava Bashuk, if she is spinning her wool, or, well, 
it seems to be spilling what the Gemara is going to say in in the in, in the street outside because in the, when it says bashuk in the marketplace it doesn't literally mean market but it meant in public uh, in the street. If she speaks with everyone, if she curses his parents uh, in front of in front of uh, her husband, Rabbi Tarfanomer Afa Kolanis. If she's very noisy, Veizu Kolanis doesn't mean that she's noisy. When she's speaking in the house, uh, other people hear uh, her voice, and the Gemara is going to say. Uh, uh, what exactly are we talking about? Okay, so we'll turn uh, to the Gemara and here, the article 72A3, the middle of Ayin Beis Ahmed Aleph. She feeds him something that wasn't Musar. Unfortunately, I know uh, someone wants, not wants, uh, his in laws. Uh, they didn't keep a high level of kashas, but they said that they ca- that they that they would make everything good for their uh, their their kid and and the in law. But uh, when the 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 uh, the kid the their their uh, child and the spouse went over there, they found that the the fish they found the wrapper from the fish that it was a not kosher fish. So. Uh, the in-law child would uh, refuse to go back there anymore. In general, I'm, I'm saying I think that that is a, a bit of an exception. Uh, case that's an exception. There's there's plenty of uh, of Bali Chuva whose parents, even if they don't understand why, they're very they're very accommodating to their kids. This was this was a case where the parents definitely knew better, but uh, this is a case where the wife knows the wife knows better and she and she doesn't take up the miser. So hey, chidami, what's the case? Idiyada, if he knows that the miser wasn't taken off nifrosh, he should just separate it himself. There's halacha that even if it's on your plate, you just push a little bit off your plate to the side, and you can take the miser off of uh, off off of it on your plate. Vidlo yada mino yada. And if he doesn't know, how did he ever find out that he can go to Basin and say, my wife is giving me stuff that the miser wasn't taken off. I'm going to divorce her and she's going to lose her ksuva. So lo tzrichi. So it's not a question. The amila ploni coin tikan liya sakri. She said that, uh, you know, that uh, Aaron the Cohen came and he took and and uh, and uh, I gave him truma and, and uh, whatever I needed to separate from the pile. And then she asked him, uh, he, then he saw, the husband saw Aaron the Cohen and said, Aaron, my wife said that she gave you uh, the truma. And he said, she didn't give me the truma. So that's a case where, uh, so that's a case where, because what the question was, if he knows, he can he can take off the mice himself. And if he doesn't know, he doesn't know. How would he ever know to divorce her? So the case is that she told him that it was okay because because Shmiro the Kohen got it, and then when he asked Shmiro, he denied it. So there is a similar halacha. Hey, wait, I don't know if the Gemara is actually going to say it right here. I forgot. Yeah, we're going to see it a few lines down. Or if she had relations with him when she was a Nida, and and he thought that she wasn't Anita, and he wouldn't have had relations with her if, if he knew that she, that she hadn't gone to the mikvah. So hey, chidami. So again, what's the case? Idiyadaba. If he knew that he that she was Anita Nifrosh, he should separate from her. Idlo yada nismach ilave. And if he didn't know, he should still rely on her because she's the one who knows. So why is he so sure that uh, that she's Anita and she would lose her ksuva? Uh, I mean, there is a case. I don't think the Gemara is talking about this case. Uh, that sometimes she, the, oh, it's possible that during the marital relations, the woman has a feeling, and she feels like that she that the blood is coming th- out of her uterus, whatever, and she's going to be Anita or a Zava. So the halacha talks about what they have to do in a case like that. And there is, I don't know where I read this, but I read that. Uh, 
It was somewhere during the Holocaust. I thought it was in Shanghai, but I don't know if it makes if it was in Shanghai or not. And suddenly they put out fire. There were fireworks, or whatever. And the woman got very scared and felt that sh that blood came out because she was startled by these booms or whatever. So I'm trying to make because because the war wasn't in Shanghai, but it's possible that they had fireworks for something. I don't remember the details. So. So, I mean, it's possible that sometimes very suddenly she becomes Anita and there's a lot of, but this seems to be a much less uh, a sudden case. She didn't go to the mikvah and she misled him as if he did go to the mikvah. But also we rely on the, on the, on the, on the wife. So how would she, he know that, she, that she wasn't. So the Amar of Hina, that she was, that she, that she said, if she intimated that she was Tahora, how does he know that she wasn't? And that he goes to the basin and says, I'm divorcing her and she's losing Ksuba. Damar of Khinna Markana Mar Shmuel, because of Khinna Barkahana said the name of Shmuel, Minaila Nida Shasafers La Atzma. How do we know that the Nida counts to herself when she, because the Nida, well, and the Torah law, uh, seven days, excuse me, hello, okay. And we rely on what she says. So lo tricha. So we could give an explanation how the husband knows. The amra. It's very similar to what we just saw. The amra lech cloni chacham tirli adam. You know, Rabbi so and so said that my that the blood I have is not damnida. So I'm not. I so I'm not tmea. Va'azol shaylei v'shtachak shikra. And then she asked him. And then he went and asked Rabbi so and so, and he says, "I she didn't ask me the shaila. I didn't say it was okay." So it seems to be a case where he knew that that there was blood, there was a shaila. Nowadays, again, the halal. Well, nowadays that's not true. It could be a kesem, and uh, and 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 it might be tahora, might not be tahora. But he knew that there was blood. But then she said that that uh, she got a psak from a certain rabbi that it was okay. And then he went and found, the, and he asked the rabbi. The rabbi said, she never asked me. I never gave her the heter. Or she says, either she, he said, I, she didn't ask me at all. Or he said, I told her it wasn't okay. That there's two possibilities. If he could say, it's like Rabbi Yehuda. If she was known, if her neighbors felt that she was a nida, the husband would get lashes. Uh, if for, if he had relations with her for being a Balnida, because for example, it seems that uh, either they wore different clothes while they were Nida, because let's say if they're a Kohanim or, or, or um, um, a Chaver, who they were very careful about eating stuff that didn't become Tame, they couldn't borrow certain stuff from their neighbor if the if their if their neighbor was a Nida at the time, because if they would use her thing, they'd have to put in the mikvah first. So, so there was certain things done in code or what they would wear or whatever that people would know if she was Anita in her neighborhood. So if the, if the people in the neighborhood, she gave those signals to the other people that she was Anita, but that her husband, she wasn't, the presumption that she's Anita is so strong that we would give her, they would give him lashes. If there was a warning, Hasra, we would give him lashes for, uh, for violating the Isra of being Baal Nida. So so how so how does the husband know that she was Anita? Either because she claimed that the, the, they knew there was a Shiloh of the Dam, but he, she said Rabbi so and so said it was okay, and he asked, and the rabbi said it what he never that that wasn't true, or the neighbors felt she was Anita, so he found out from the neighbors that that uh, they felt she was Anita, and she didn't tell him, so that's how he would know that she was Anita, and 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 misled him, and they could get divorced.